Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? Happy Thanksgiving, or as I like to call it, the rebirth of cryptocurrency. Watch out. Dogecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, watch them blow up. Starting today, Bitcoin's already going. Don't ask me why. It might have something to do with, like, the family sitting around the dining room table, the kitchen table, just people together, okay? And everybody's talking about either how they're saving money, how they're investing money, cryptocurrency, the stock market, things that are exciting, right? I don't know, but Bitcoin's already freaking blowing up. Um, algorithmic buying, though, just is the reason that everything trails up behind Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin's going up, and uh, it is said that Bitcoin's going to hit 90,000, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of professional uh, analysts that are saying they do this shit for a living. You know what I'm saying? They're saying that Bitcoin will hit 90 to 100,000 by the end of this year, which would probably put, we were really hoping Dogecoin would fall into that dollar bracket once Bitcoin hit $100,000. That is not likely going to happen, but it will probably hit 33 cents. So keep your eyes on Dogecoin. And uh, so I put $10,000 yesterday, didn't do any day trading. I just decided to buy as the market, literally last five minutes of the freaking market. Uh, AMC was at like $38 and something. And I said, screw it. I'm just going to slam $10,000 in my account and buy $10,000 worth. It ends up getting me 267 or 68 shares, something like that. And then somebody this morning hits my uh, YouTube page and they're bombarding me saying, dude, what do you think of uh, what Lou's saying? He's saying don't buy any more AMC because everybody's getting uh, synthetic shares, man. And you're, it's just a total waste to buy. Stop buying. And I'm uh, thinking to myself, well, damn, I just bought 10,000. Why in the world would I take that advice? Okay, synthetics. Here's the thing. Um, first of all, I don't care if I'm buying synthetics. I don't care if the whole float is already purchased. All I care about is my money. When this thing blows, I want my money. Now, it, it, let's just look at the synthetics as you getting paid. Let's look at that side of things really quick. Do you think the SEC at the end of the day is going to be like, okay, she just blew. We, we, you've got your short squeeze, but oh my God, hold on a minute. You have 300 synthetic shares. You don't get paid. You think that's how the guy, the, the total... The blind uh, retail investor that has absolutely no idea whether he's got synthetics or not. You think he's going to get penalized for the illegal activity that the SEC has been blind to? Nah, he's not going to get penalized. You're getting paid. So I don't give a shit if I got synthetics or real. My ass is getting paid. Now let's look at it from a buying pressure point of view, standpoint. First of all, volume. If you have more selling than buying, what happens? simple economics the price goes down all right now why would you have more selling than buying right now well let's think of a couple things we're moving into tax season people are going to start liquidating so that they can pay some taxes aren't they uh also a lot of people have been holding for a year now which means what that means people are getting impatient people are walking people are like screw this shit it's never going to squeeze i'm out of here they're taking their profit and they're walking they're moving some people are even taking losses and they're moving on to bigger and better things in their mind Ask yourself this why would you you know be a flagship for more selling than buying do you not want buying pressure the whole point here is even if you're putting pressure on synthetics the whole point here is the harder you make a company like Citadel bleed, okay, the higher their cost to borrow interest increases. Guys, if you stop buying, whether it's synthetic or real shares, okay, so let's say the whole float is already purchased and you are getting synthetics, you're still applying pressure to Citadel, you're still buying the stock. What happens is if you stop buying the stock and now we move in, we okay, synthetics are out the door, now you're actually back to buying the actual shares, okay? That would be a bad thing, wouldn't you think? Because right now, if the entire float is purchased, it needs to remain that way. You don't want people coming around just selling this thing off. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, brother. You don't want people coming around, and now the word is, you know, hey, stop buying. No, bad time to stop buying. If, if anything, you gotta apply more pressure. Simple economics. The more you buy, the price goes up. Doesn't matter if it's synthetic or real shares. The price goes up, the bleeding goes up, the cost to borrow interest goes up. Therefore, you have to continue buying this thing until it short squeezes, okay? Big difference between a squeeze, just a, a random FOMO squeeze, and an actual short squeeze. 
All right. So you got to continue to buy this thing and buy it and buy it. And don't let the selling uh, exceed the buying because it very well, the tables could turn, the selling exceeds the buying. And the next thing you know, a company like Citadel is covering at a very low dollar amount. They walk out hardly unscathed. And the whole message behind the movement is lost because we stopped buying. All right. Doesn't make any sense. So hopefully you guys don't take that advice. Um, as far as uh, DWAC goes, I sold DWAC at 61. I moved all my money over to Bitcoin. The whole point with Bitcoin was I wanted to buy at 57 and then I wanted to sell at 68. Um, lucky for me, I was tied up in Bitcoin. Bitcoin dropped to 55 at that time. DWAC was crunching all the way down to 40, 39, then 38. I wasn't even in it during the decline. I did a video. You guys should watch my video. I did uh, last week talking about how I sell out of DWAC. I move over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes to 68. I sell out of six. I sell out of Bitcoin back in yada, yada, yada. It's a circle jerk back and forth, back and forth. I got lucky because Bitcoin actually dropped to 55 and held my money firmly in bit while DWAC tanked. I'm hoping I get 68 to $70,000, maybe even $90,000 they're talking about by the end of this year with Bitcoin to where, of course, rinse and repeat. That's what I do. I just rinse and repeat, do this whole thing over back and forth, back and forth and keep accumulating wealth, man. I'm not, I don't care about taxes. Pay your freaking taxes. If uh, everybody that comes around says, oh, you got to pay that capital gains tax. Listen, man, I pay a fortune in taxes with all my businesses every year. You know, when you have the mentality that you're already paying a shit ton of money in taxes, you want as much extra money as you can possibly freaking get capital gains. So uh, taxes don't fear people that are already in business. We're already freaking used to that shit. All right. So um, that's all I got to say, man. Right now, I'm, I'm not saying I'm stuck in Bitcoin, but I'm out of I'm out of DWAC. I sold all my DWAC, so I am holding all my money, just about all my money right now is housed in AMC, Bitcoin, a little bit of Dogecoin, and some other altcoins in Crypto.com. I do have Crow, and I don't have it because I actually purchased it. I have it because when you sell Bitcoin on Crypto.com, sometimes they'll say, hey, would you like that in Crypto.com currency? And I'll be like, hell yeah, give me some of that shit. So the other day I went in, I looked and I was like, holy cow, man, I got several thousand of these damn things that I didn't even realize I had. And now it's sitting, I think at 90 cents or something like that. So now I'm actually paying attention, attention to it. It was a total fluke that I had it though. I didn't buy it intentionally. So, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy cryptocurrency rebirth day. Pay attention to Dogecoin, pay attention to Bitcoin. Uh, one last thing, a fella hits me up the other day and he goes, dude, I got a hundred thousand dollars. He goes, where do you suggest I put the 100 Gs? First of all, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is what I told the dude. I said, are you a risk taker or do you want a guarantee? He goes, I want a guarantee. I don't want to lose my 100 Gs. I said, put it in Bitcoin then. Bitcoin, year over year over year, is the number one performing asset every freaking year. Going into next year is going to be the number one performing asset, which means you get the most return for your buck. All right, so the no-brainer here for all y'all, if you want to do fractional shares, if you got the money to just buy Bitcoin, buy it the shit up because that's the guarantee. Now, if you want the huge risk, of course, you're going into DWAC, you're going into AMC, you're going into GME. Those are the huge risk return stocks, all right? So just think about where you sit, you know? Are you a scaredy cat or are you a big player? If you're a big player, man, then you go after the big plays like DWAC. DWAX the big freaking play. All right, going into 2022. Uh, AMC could blow in 2022. You want the guarantee? There you go. Cryptocurrency. Y'all have an awesome Thanksgiving. Doge Warrior out, baby. Shaboom. Peace.